Hey Data Factory fans, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I want to talk to you about the top five things that you should think about as you start to build your pipelines in Fabric Data Factory if you are an experienced EDF developer already. So this is going to talk about five of those concepts that I think are very important for you to know that are slightly different in Fabric and how to get started there, okay? So take a look at my screen. You'll see that I have my factory open. This is Azure Data Factory. And I have I'm uh, selected the Manage section and I have my link services open. So let's start with link services and integration runtimes. Link services represent your connections, essentially your connection to your data store, as well as your credentials for connecting to that and the compute that you want to use to connect to that. So whether that's in the cloud with an Azure integration runtime, on-premises with a self-hosted integration runtime if you want to use a VNet or if you are uh, creating activities that use SSIS. Those are managed here, of course, through integration runtimes in your data factory. Now, when you're coming over to Fabric, so let me click on my Fabric, what you're going to see is that if I click Settings up here and then Manage Connections and Gateways, I'll see my connections. Connections are roughly equivalent to your link services. You'll have your credentials and your connection information inside of connections. And then you have the on-premises data gateways, which is your self-host integration runtimes, just like you're managing those in integration runtimes or IRs inside of Data Factory and your VNet data gateways. So if I select one of these connections and I click on uh, settings, you will see that I can have the different types of what we think of as IRs or compute just like you had in ADF. So this is cloud or the Azure IR. There's the virtual network and on-premises. So very, very similar. Now, in terms of something that's new inside of Fabric that you don't have an ADF, you also have this ability to set the user. So I can say manage user and I can give permissions to others to use and to share my connection. Very powerful sharing capability within all right, let's flip back to EDF, my next topic, which is going to be data sets. So I'm going to go back over here into the home of my factory, and I'll go into author. So here are my data sets inside of my factory. And data sets represents what is the shape of your data, what does your data look like, what is the schema, the fields, and so forth. When you're over here in Fabric now, that concept is not present. However, the properties that define your data sets are and let me explain what I mean by that. I'm going to go into a pipeline, a very simplistic pipeline with a single copy activity. And let me pick um, one of my data sources. Here, I'll pick this one here. And if I go into the uh, connection type for this, by the way, this is a, uh, a Gen 2, a DLS Gen 2, you will see that the data set properties essentially are inline inside of that copy activity. So you'll sit in the source and the destination. And notice destination is the name used in Fabric, not, not sync as an EDF. This is where you can set your data set properties and you can parameterize these just like you can inside of a data set. Although because there are no data sets, the idea of a data set parameter is not there in Fabric. So just keep in mind that those settings are all going to be inside your copy activity uh, inside of Fabric versus a separate data set object that you have an EDF. All right, let's go back to ADF and talk about the third topic, which is triggers. So back to manage, and you'll see the idea of triggers. Now within Data Factor, we have different kinds of triggers. We have uh, schedule triggers, we have tumbling window, uh, storage events, we have custom events. The name trigger is something that we're just now introducing into Fabric, but the same concepts are there as well. When you're in Fabric, you'll see that I have a schedule button up here. This is the wall clock scheduler like you have as a trigger type that's called the schedule inside of ADF, very, very similar, but there's only currently today just a one-to-one -one, and it's, uh, in other words, you can only have one schedule for one pipeline and you can't, the pipe, the schedule is not a separate entity that can be managed outside of the pipeline. So you can't share that schedule definition with other pipelines. And this is something that we're looking at um, within Fabric as a way to make it more flexible. And the other thing that we are doing is we are introducing the idea of the events and storage triggers that will be coming really soon in Fabric. But for now, just keep in mind that triggers are only the schedule within Fabric. All right, next one is when I'm going to stay here inside of Fabric because it's a net new thing that um, you'll find a much better ease of use inside of Fabric Data Factory than you would in ADF. And that is if I click here on this, the Add Activity, so I can see the toolbox, um, I can set um, email and Teams as activities natively inside of Fabric Data Factory without needing to have to use a web activity 
or uh, some kind of custom activity to do that. So these are all natively built within Fabric. So if you have pipelines today in ADF that are using uh, Logic Apps or uh, web activities to do that, you uh, won't need to do that. You can just redo those as pipelines that use these native activities to call Teams or an email. The last area I'll cover today is monitoring. So back to Data Factory again, and you see that the monitoring is over here. And of course, this is a Data Factory, so only the um, pipelines are going to show up in here. Now, similar to Synapse within um, Fabric, your monitoring is going to show you everything in your workspace, including your Spark jobs and your data warehouse and lake house and all those other things that you are executing inside of your workspace. So the button is over here, it's called monitor, and I can have a filter on it. Actually, I can have all kinds of different filters on it. Let's look for, actually, I already am filtered on just the data pipelines. What happens now is when you click on that, you will get to the detail, and this is where you're gonna see the detailed monitoring. That monitoring hub is a shared capability within Fabric, so it's meant to provide a uh, sort of level one look at what things are running or not running well within your workspace. Notebook, the pipeline itself, that is when you will see the detail monitoring that you've had within ADF and Data Factory, and then all the rest of the details are there that you can uh, work with and you can add to your outputs inside of uh, your monitoring and you can do the export that we have in ADF there as well. All right, so hopefully that gives you a good set of uh, you know five fundamentals to think about as you are migrating your development of pipelines from EDF into Fabric, and uh, thanks for watching.